Hello, I'm going to tell you the optimal withdrawal strategy from a, for a 529 college savings plan. And it's a very interesting mathematical uh, problem. Like you, you have some asset and you're gonna be withdrawing from it. And what is the strategy to make those withdrawals so that um, you get, you pull the same amount each time. And the assumption is that your asset is growing. Like it, it's it's an inve they invested in the stock market or whatever they invested in it grows at about um, five or six or seven percent per year even when you're in college it grows more aggressively like for younger kids when college is far away but even for the students that are in college it's still growing so and also you may be contributing to it at the same time so there's at least two mechanisms of growth for this thing so. What is, the strat what is the optimal strategy for uh, when it's time to pay for college? How, do you, how should you pull money out of the account? And this is a really nice uh, application of like an optimization problem to, to try to solve for this. And I'll talk a little bit about college prices and the mathematics behind this decision making. Let's take a look. I probably first should say what is a 529 college savings account? It's this account where the growth grows tax-free. So the government wants to encourage uh, people to go to college and have a way to pay for college. They want to have an educated population. And so they have this program where you can contribute to a 529 account and it will grow tax-free. And so that's what it is. And then you can use this money to pay for college. So I looked up on the internet some withdrawal strategies and they just talk about like really boring stuff like what are the withdrawal rules and stuff like that. And it's like, I'm gonna talk about the math behind like what should you do um, because this thing's gonna be growing as you're withdrawing from it. So let's take a look at that. So here's a, a totally simple example just to get our get our brain uh, thinking about the right thing. Suppose we just had a fixed amount of money and there's no growth. We're not gonna be contributing to it and it's not growing. So you just, and, and let's say um, you're gonna go to college for eight semesters. So you just take that amount, you divide it into, you divide it by eight and that's how much you use each semester. Um, you use the same amount uh, each, because it doesn't grow. So you divide it into, to eight portions and you use that same amount each semester. So that's one eighth um, the first semester, then one seventh the next semester, one sixth, one fifth, one fourth, one third, one half, then all of it. And if you do this strategy um, with no growth, then every single semester you'll have withdrawn the same amount. But then what happens if you're contributing to it and or it's growing? which it is, it's growing at about say 6% annually, roughly, depending on market conditions and everything else, whatever. If we applied this same strategy, if we took one eighth out the first semester, then we took, but it, but uh, when it's time to pull from it the second semester, it grew a little bit. So if we pull one seventh out, we're gonna get a little bit more, and then, the, and then it keeps growing and growing, growing, growing. So you see sort of the length of these green bars keeps growing, growing, growing because we're contributing to it and or it's growing. So just using these fractions here doesn't give you um, equal withdrawals each time. So the problem that I'm going to solve is what should these fractions be? How much should you take out each semester so that the length of these green bars is exactly the same? And the very last semester, the assumption is that you have to um, use all of it. So we're, really we're trying to solve for seven different numbers. What are these seven numbers that will give us um, equal amounts each year? We're gonna be looking at uh, charts like this. So if we're not contributing to it and it's not growing, and so, so for this simple example, let's say we have uh, $80,000 in the account. Just to make the math easy, 80,000 divided by eight is 10,000 a semester. College is super expensive. I'll show you a slide on, on college prices. But, and, and so if it's not growing and it's not contributing to it, fine, you just pay $10,000 a semester and that at the very end you've used all your money. 
But now let's assume it's growing at a 6% uh, annual return. So if you follow this, like take one eighth out the first time, one seventh, one sixth, and, and so on, you'll see that uh, the amount you pull out um, increases each year instead of being constant each year. So we're looking for a strategy where we can maybe scale up these withdrawals so that this will be perfectly flat. So we'll end up with, we're, we'll pull out the same amount uh, each semester. Uh, he, this is starting with the same example. Um, eight, we're starting with $80,000, but in this case, we're also contributing $400 a month and it's going up uh, 6% a year, which is perhaps uh, what we would expect. In this case, it's even more skewed. So we pulled out uh, one eighth uh, at the beginning, but then by the time we're senior year, we're pulling out like nineteen thousand dollars or something. So, th so this is all messed up. So, how can we? How can we? Uh, what fractions of the account should we pull out each semester to make it balance? I guess I'll say something first about uh, college prices. So, I got this information from OnToCollege.com, uh, average college tuition. They just have this table there. Um, so, like in two thousand eight, it was like twenty thousand dollars a year. And the data went up to 2018, which was $28,000 a year. And then um, these red numbers I just extrapolated. I just said, well, the percent increase is roughly 3% a year. So college is going up about 3% a year. So uh, let's see, what are we in 2021? It's like, this is averaged uh, for a four-year college is like $31,000. And, uh, and by 2024, it'll be $34,000. So it's big business. So at a 3% per year increase, uh, we can use the rule of 69, just take 69 divided by three, what is that, 23? So every 23 years, um, college prices double, a moving target. Now I wrote a Python optimization program to solve for those coefficients of, of what fraction of the account should we pull out um, each semester. So just, just so we can kind of see how this works, let's start with a, a starting balance a starting balance of 80,000 and we're not contributing to it. And let's say there's no interest rate. So let's run this cell. Um, so this is saying eight semesters remaining, we're paying $10,000 uh, each semester and it, we're not contributing to it and it's not growing. So this is very simple. We could figure this out. We don't need my program to do that. And this thing that's this telling us the fraction. So this is one eighth, one seven, one six, and so on. Just one over n, and yeah, they're all equal payments. This is just a warm up. Okay, fine. Now let's run. Let's say we're not going to make any monthly payment, but it's going to grow at six percent, uh, which is pretty common. It's what we might expect. So here's the the initial conditions. Um, the fraction we're picking is just one over n. So this is one eighth, one seventh, one sixth, one half, all the way down. But if we if we follow that strategy, we're going to get these uneven payments. So I wrote this little optimization program to optimize it. So it turns out, um, so this column here that says fraction, this column here is the fraction you should take out. So take out 13.8% the first year, 15.6% the second semester, sorry, not the first year, the first semester, and so on. So this was tuned to make all these payments exactly the same, and it turns out it's $11,064. So um, maybe let's start with this plot here. So the blue one is just the simple strategy of one over the number of semesters remaining, but that because it's growing, uh, we, we get an unequal amount per semester. And then this orange one is this algorithm that that's tuned to make all these bars the same. This is, you know, accounting for the growth and everything. How much should you take out? So the takeaway here is these orange bars. These um, this will give you equal payments. So if you take out this fraction the first semester, this fraction the second semester, and note that it's a little more than this one over n thing. So. If we look at the frac, so this column here, so this is a set of universal numbers. If you're not contributing to your 529B, um, it doesn't matter. I started with $80,000, but because it's a linear problem, because we're not contributing, um, these are universal numbers. So everybody can use these numbers. So if you're a freshman and you say, how much should I pull out 
uh, pull out about 14% uh, from your account. And this fact norm thing, this is how much bigger it is than the one over N. So this is 1.1 times bigger than one eighth. This is 1.09 times bigger than one seventh uh, and so on. So like if we scroll up to the initial conditions, this is just one eighth, one seventh, one six and so on. And this, this fraction is just one. But now if we do this iterative algorithm, say, so basically, basically this is saying is pull out a little bit more than the one over N thing. Uh, now as a, as a one final example will run, let's say we're starting with $80,000. We're gonna make a monthly contribution of 400 and a 6% growth rate. So let's run that one. So again, here are our initial conditions. If we just pull out um, one over N, we first make $10,000 and it keeps going up. By the time we reach the final semester of our senior year, we're paying $19,000. So you know, how do we spread that out? And so this is just the one over N. If we look at this column here, this is just one over N. And so we run this iterative algorithm thing here. And it turns out uh, 13,163 is the sweet spot to withdraw um, each semester. And here's this renormalization factor. So it's saying pull out 16.5% the first semester, 18.5% the next semester. And this is relative to one eighth. So this is saying 31% more than one eighth, 29% more than one seventh. So sort of the good news is you can actually pull out quite a bit more than just this simple strategy. Um, so here's what it looks like. If you just pulled out the, the blue bars are for the, just pull out one over N for, for the number of semesters remaining, but you can pull out uh, quite a bit more than that um, uh, to, to make it, well, at least in the beginning, and then it's less in the end. And these are the adjusted fractions. So because it's growing, you can, it, it's all, you're always pulling out more. The orange bars are actually more, the amount you're pulling out. And this plot, this is pretty cool. This is showing my algorithm iterating. So uh, this blue curve is for the um, first semester, starts off at 1 eighth. Orange is for the second semester, starts off at one seventh. Green is one sixth, one fifth, one fourth, one third, one half. And the last semester, the assumption is you take all of the money. So then the algorithm is iterating, the horizontal axis is iteration number. And so it's trying to find what should these coefficients be so that the payments are balanced. So, you, so we're getting equal payments each semester. So, I thought this was pretty cool. Um, there didn't seem to be much information on this on the internet of like the basically these coefficients here, this column here, fraction, is saying like how much the fraction you should pull from your account each semester. And the good news is, at least in the beginning, you can pull um, more that. Well, oh, I guess it's always it's always more than uh, yeah one over n. Yeah, you're always pulling more than one over n. So anyways, um, I suppose we could apply the same strategy to, I'm so used to saving money for, for once in my life, I'm spending money, using money, don't know how to spend money. It's, it's a completely foreign concept to me. Um, but this kind of strategy, you know, you have some, some resource that's growing and you wanna, you know, pull money out of it this gives us a nice uh, optimization strategy for, for pulling out money where you, you're pulling out uh, the same amount each year. And thank you very much for your time and attention. We'll see you next time.